Hey, future scholars, welcome to the Compass. I'm Professor Malat, and in today's video, we're going to delve into the crucial decision that many adult learners face when it comes to college classes, online or in person, which one is right for you. If you're contemplating your educational journey and grappling with this decision, you're in the right place. But before we explore the pros and cons of online and in-person classes, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content aimed at adult learners. You can also find a free guide on time management for busy students in the description box below. So one thing about online learning is it's gotten a bad rap in recent years, mostly because of our experiences with the COVID-19 pandemic. As you might remember, education and workplaces were hit with all of these sudden changes and switching to remote and having to learn online and work online. And um, we were all kind of caught by surprise, especially those of us in higher education, having to suddenly switch to emergency remote delivery. That's what it was called. Um, but there have been some good things that have grown out of those experiences. Um, especially in the world of higher education. So I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of online education, as well as those of the in-person, more traditional classroom experience. So let's start with online education. There are a lot of adult students who find this format appealing for a variety of reasons. Um, so one of them happens to be flexibility. That's a major advantage to the adult learner is that flexibility. Online courses can allow you to study from anywhere at any time um, and usually can accommodate your busy schedule. Um, another advantage of online learning is sometimes it can be cost effective. While your tuition might stay the same as a traditional classroom course, um, you are defraying your costs in other ways. You don't have to commute to campus. You don't have to pay for parking. And for some of you, especially adult learners, you're not gonna be living on campus. So you can learn from the comfort of your own home. Um, there is also this diversity in learning resources. By choosing an online course, you often have access to resources that are right at your fingertips, especially if you have the technology available to you at home. You can learn from not only print materials, you can learn from visual materials, learn from audio materials, and this can be especially an advantage for those who have accessibility uh, issues, you know, those people who may be sight or hearing impaired, you suddenly have <clears throat> a broader uh, range of learning resources at your fingertips. So that can be a definite advantage. Um, but on the flip side there, there are some disadvantages to online learning. Um, if you are the type of person who learns better in a structured one on, you know, not one on one, but a structured in person environment, online learning may not be the best for you. There is also, of course, the technology issue, right? Um, one of the drawbacks to the experiences we had when we were first dealing with emergency remote delivery of courses was that not every student had access to the technology. The students didn't have internet at home or reliable internet at home. They may not have had computers at home. Many students were relying on using the technology that was available to them on campus. And then suddenly they were on lockdown and had to work from home. So I personally had many students who were submitting work from their cell phones, right? They did have mobile phones. They occasionally had Wi-Fi that they had access to. Um, so they were able to complete work that way. I had one student who actually hand wrote all of their work, took photos of it and sent it to me through email that way from her phone. So um, that can be a disadvantage. If you don't have the technology available to you, um, 
in-person learning might be better. So of course, one of the pros of in-person learning is that structured environment, right? It can be immersive learning. You have face-to-face -face interactions with your professors as well as your peers, and that can often foster a sense of community that is sometimes lacking in those online classes. There's also the opportunity to network. You not only within your classes and your peer group, but you also have the opportunities when you're on campus to take part in a lot of group activities, a lot of meetings, conferences, so on and so forth. Um, and if you are in the sciences, health fields or arts, there is also that hands-on learning experience that you would not get otherwise um, in an online class. So that's definitely a pro to attending in-person classes. Um, one of the wonderful things that has come out of our experiences with COVID and the online emergency remote delivery, the, the online learning, um, is that many colleges are now offering more online classes. So you don't have to be in an online program or a strictly online school. You could take some online classes, take some in-person classes, or the best of both worlds, you could take a hybrid class. Hybrid classes, you may meet once a week and do the rest online, or you could even meet only once a month and do the rest of the work online. I have taught both hybrid classes, online classes, online asynchronous classes, online synchronous classes, uh, as well as teaching in person. So I've had the whole experience there. I've also had that experience as a student. Um, I was in a program that offered hybrid classes as well as online classes and evening classes for my master's program, in addition to meeting in person and face-to-face -face and, and having that sense of community that you sometimes don't get if you're in a strictly online program. So those are all things that you need to be thinking about as you consider whether or not you want to be in a completely online program, if you want to be in some kind of a mix of the two, or you want to be strictly in person. Um, so some of the things that you need to think about, some of the things that you should consider is your personal learning style. Think about your personal preferences. Do you thrive working more independently and being self-driven and self-motivated, self-paced? Or do you thrive in a more structured environment of the, or the traditional classroom? Um, another thing to consider is your time and schedule constraints. If you are an adult learner, it's likely that you are working a job, you may be raising a family, you may be doing it all, right? And there are a lot of demands on your time. So if that's the case, an online asynchronous course delivery might be more suitable for you. That is the flexibility that could be a game changer for you in your education. You also want to consider what your career goals are. Um, I know in the past that those online programs and those online colleges were kind of looked down upon as not being real education, but let's face it, more traditional universities, universities and colleges that relied on the traditional classroom experience are now offering online classes in addition to those face-to-face -face classes. So a degree or a certification from a, an institution that is better known for being a traditional uh, course offering, that might be better for you than going in a completely online program where that institution might not be very well known um, and you know, it might be look better on your resume to have a very um, traditional looking school on your resume, if that makes sense. You also want to think about the whole technology deal. How comfortable are you using technology? You need to assess the comfort you have using technology. Do you have the resources available to you at home? Um, do you have reliable internet or is your internet one that's kind of spotty? It goes out a lot or you have to rely on dial up. Do people even have dial up anymore? 
I don't know. Um, so definitely consider your comfort with technology. When I returned to get my master's, it was 25 years after I, my previous college experience and the technology had just taken off. So there were a lot of things that I had to learn, even though I was comfortable using computers and using word processing, there was software that I needed to become more familiar with, namely PowerPoint, how to create a PowerPoint presentation. That was something I did not do as an undergrad that is now uh, understood to be taught in high schools, right? Every high school student knows how to put together some kind of basic PowerPoint presentation. So that was a skill that I had to teach myself. So if you're comfortable teaching yourself these skills and doing a little bit of uh, autodidactic learning, self-learning, um, then, you know, maybe online education would be good for you. So as we conclude, I want you to remember that the right choice for you is a personal one. Whether you opt for online or in-person education, the goal is the same, to enhance your knowledge, your skills, and to achieve your dreams. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Share it with others facing the same kind of decision and comment below with your thoughts. I want to know what your story is. This is Professor Malat from The Compass signing off. Choose wisely, embrace your educational journey, and remember, the path you take is uniquely yours. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.